Morning everybody. Um, it's about seven o'clock in the morning and I'm in a little village, a little pit village called Crook. I just swing around here. There's the entrance to Crook Village. There's a little school on the right hand side, a little pit houses that have been lovely, lovely renovation. Um, in about 1975, 76, these were all going to be knocked down by the local council. But a housing association run by the residents took over, like a cooperative, and they saved them and now it's absolutely the most desirable place to live and you can't get a house here for love and the money so the little bit I'm on is over here and this is Crook Marina Crook Marina is a canal side marina so it's full of narrow boats and a few little white plastic ones let's go and have a walk around and have a look Feeling a bit blur which this is morning, this camera. I might just need a bit more coffee. There's John's boat, Louise's boat. And off we go down the first canal side walkway. So this marina was dug out probably, I would say about 15, maybe 20 years ago. This originally was, prior to the deep pits being built, this was a, a colliery for the surface pits. So this, if you go back 150 years, would have been absolutely thick with a layer of coal dust. It would have been a horrible place. There was none of the houses, they were all built later. And this was just the place where they exchanged the coal, which was drawn over the hill, where that big building is, you can see on the horizon, that's Hines National Distribution Centre. And it would be drawn over the top of that hill from Winston Lee, from Oral, by horses on a little track, and then dragged down here, loaded onto barges, and taken down the river, because at that time there was no canal. So, it'd be dragged down the river all the way to Preston, where it'd be loaded onto ships to go to wherever it was going to go, maybe around different parts of the UK. It was easier taking it around than taking it across the land uh, or exporting it. They then built the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, which you'll see in a minute, and the people who built the canal bought the rights to moving coal on the river and stop people doing it so that they had to go onto the canal. But we'll go and see the canal in a bit. So this little area in front of us now, if you just have a little look, this area is where what we call the plastic boats go. And these are the small day crews and stuff like that. They're not made of plastic, they're made of sort of fiberglassy stuff. Um, but they're white as opposed to these, which are conversions of original or replicas of original canal boats. Some of each here. Some are what they call cruisers, because they have a cruiser back, like the third one in. Some are semi-traditionals, like the second one in. And then occasionally, as we're gonna see in a bit, you'll see one which is traditional, which you just stand on the back, and there's no real space on the back at all, because uh, everything was about cargo. Uh, so, as we go around, you'll see these beautiful lawns, these beautiful pieces of grass are kept there by Yvonne. She's out there, as soon as the weather gets nice, she's out cutting them, puts nice little lines in. You could play cricket on these. She's very, very proud of them, and rightfully so. So, we'll go around here. This little tugboat here, as you can see, there's no engine on the back of it. This is a conversion. What this normally would be, wouldn't normally have that top on it. What it would normally be is hollowed out and it would carry stuff like silt from the bottom of the canal because they do silt up and then somebody's very cleverly put a top on that one so i'm quite impressed with that and this is one that's not got the top on so you can see the difference they put a pointy bit on the front of it and this is used for dredging the marina
and we'll pop off to my favourite part of the marina. So the sun's trying to break through the clouds here. We've had a really dull overcast day yesterday, which is terrible because last Saturday, or Saturday just gone, I had an awesome day. It was fantastic. We had a barbecue, we had fresh sardines on the barbecue. I would have videoed it for you, but to be honest, the day just flew past so fast. I was washing up before I realised I had not had the camera out, so I'll not make that mistake again. I'll make a note. Now here we've got one of my favourite boats, this is Kiwi. And Kiwi's little garden area, which everybody can use. But this is looked after after Kiwi and the boat with the funniest name on the marina for me, Nomad Rush. Now here you've got it written as one, one word, Nomad. But on their little life belt, which we'll see in a bit, it's no mad rush. So a lovely play on words. We're an absolutely beautiful narrow boat. Uh, we're not looking inside because it's people's private boats and they're not here. But it's all lined inside with lovely hardwood work tops and absolutely brilliant. Next one here we've got Chris's boat. Lovely little boat. This. Well, it's not little at all, it's 60 foot. Um, Fleur de Mai, lovely boat, he's in the moment, if you just look at the top of it, he's just working on it to repaint it, that's why it looks a little chipped on the top. As we come down to the, uh, to the right here, there's a lump straight up from the lump on the canal bank. I've done some research onto the lump on the canal bank, and that actually predates Wigan Pier. That was built because the area in the new trees behind it, there's the river, the River Douglas is just behind it, about 20 feet. And that's the coal was transferred onto river barges and taken all the way down to where the, the Douglas flows into the Ribble, which is near Preston. When they built the canal, they built a bridge across the river and they created that key so that the same post drawn railway track could pull the coal and it could be poured from there on a tipping point into the canal barges which would then take the coal either to our left and all the way through to Leeds or any point in between normally to, to Wigan or to right all the way through to Liverpool where it could be put onto ships and taken right around the country or exported so that bit there predates, as I say, Wigan Pier. It's a fantastically historical part of the canal system. It's where the transfer happened between the river and canal for traffic of coal, and coal was just so important here. Coal was the thing, coal and cotton built Wigan. No two ways about it. And coal and cotton built Britain at that time. It was a huge, massive thing. The north of England was a real powerhouse, and that there, is where the first transfer from river to canal took place. And then obviously the canals faded when the railways came into play. And that was only a few years later, so it didn't last very long, but it was amazing for the history of coal, not so much cotton, but coal definitely in this country. That little innocuous lump on a canal bank. We'll have more about that, I think, later on. There's a lovely boat on the other side. That's what we call a wide beam. Can't quite see from this angle, but it's about 10 feet wide. So, a lovely boat. Here we've got Out of Town. If anybody remembers the TV series with Jack Hargreaves, that boat's named after that, Out of Town. And obviously, you sail it away down the canals. Looking over the back now, <coughs> then we can see the other part of the marina. And there are some wide beams there. It's a lovely place, this. There's a wide beam there, a blue one, called Take 5. Anybody fancies a wide beam? That's on the market at the moment. Mention it in the comments box if you want to know more about it. There's a couple of things that need sorting out on it, but it's a lovely sized boat. Make an ideal liverboard. And this is the place. If you live aboard, this would be the place. Crook Marina is the most fantastic place. It's well run. Everybody gets on with everybody. It's just a really, really nice place. Apart from this one here, doesn't allow camper vans and motorhomes. 
because it's a marina there are a couple or three exceptions and they're people that live on here because um, they've got boats or me here's mine and I am the exception so um, that's just a little walk around the marina and I've been drinking my coffee I'll do a second little piece where I actually talk to the camera <clears throat> but I still haven't worked out how to get rid of this little frog in my throat or how to do the turny round thing with the gimbal but I will be seeing Phil after the weekend uh, and together we'll work it out so things will improve they'll get there but for the moment I didn't want you to miss a little tour around Crook Marina although it's still seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> 